Infrared light therapy has become extremely prevalent and widely used throughout the world in the medical field because its benefits are irrefutable. There's a tremendous amount of research that shows infrared therapy can reverse peripheral neuropathy, it can heal traumatic brain injuries, heal injured muscles and joints, accelerate the healing of fractured bones, heal injured disc, and accelerate wound healing, including burns. It's no wonder people are rushing out to buy these units to try and help themselves. But sadly, many of these infrared light units on the market are complete junk and ineffective for nerve repair. So today, I'll reveal the five things you absolutely must know before buying an infrared light therapy unit. It's gonna be good, stay tuned for more. Explorer. This is Dr. Coppola, the Nerve Doctor. If you've been told your neuropathy is permanent, I'm here to help you achieve new levels of health you've never dreamed possible. If you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell so that you get notified when I publish new content. Now, let's dive in. Most of us have heard that nerves heal very slowly. But if you've watched my video on healing nerves with light, then you know that using near infrared light can accelerate nerve repair up to four times faster. In fact, I've witnessed this in my neuropathy practice. Instead of patients' nerve recovery taking eight to 12 months, our patients would recover in three to four months, which is literally record-breaking time. But before you buy a unit, I wanna make sure you don't waste your hard-earned money on garbage by avoiding some of the common pitfalls, and worse yet, crushing your hopes and dreams because you think infrared light therapy doesn't work. So today, I'm gonna to share with you five things you need to know before buying an infrared light therapy device. We'll cover proper wavelength, energy output, surface coverage, pulse modulation, and why warranty matters. Let's get started with the basic foundation, and that's proper wavelength. First, what the heck are we referring to when we talk about the wavelength of light? Technically, this is the horizontal distance between two peaks of a wave of light, and it's measured in nanometers. Now, there are many different spectrums of light, but for the purpose of nerve repair, we, o we only work with two spectrums, red light and infrared light. Now, red light wavelengths range from 620 to 750 nanometers, and it's visible to the naked eye. It doesn't penetrate very deep into the tissue, so its primary benefits are to the skin. For instance, it can help rejuvenate the skin by building collagen, healing wounds, reducing pain and inflammation, and even improving lymphatic circulation and decreasing scar tissue. On the other hand, infrared light can't be seen with the naked eye. In fact, in order to see this wavelength of light, you would need to seal yourself in a dark room just to see the glowing infrared LED lights. The wavelength for this light spectrum ranges from 800 to 1100 nanometers and can penetrate deep into the tissue up to one and a half inches. Because of infrared's ability for deep tissue penetration, it has the ability to repair damaged peripheral nerves along with muscle injury or dysfunction. So here's an important side note you need to know about wavelength when buying an infrared therapy device. Only purchase an infrared light therapy unit that operates at a wavelength between 800 and 1100 nanometers. This is the ideal wavelength for nerve repair. The red light that's emitted should be between 620 and 750 nanometer. And here's another important side note. There should be twice as many infrared diodes as there are red diodes. Be advised, if the unit only has red diodes or little to no infrared diodes, it will be completely useless for nerve repair. Remember, infrared light is not visible, so if all you see are red lights, don't even waste your money. Now, let's look at the second critical factor when purchasing an infrared therapy light unit. 
and that's adequate energy output. Now, this is the amount of light that's emitted by a device, and it's measured in joules. The number of joules, or energy output, is the dosage of light that's delivered to the body. And this energy is what determines the healing results. The higher the joules, the better the results for nerve repair. Now here's a question. If you have a device with the appropriate wavelength of light, but the device doesn't emit an adequate amount of joules or energy, will this infrared therapy unit actually repair your nerves? And the answer is no. So when purchasing a light therapy unit, it's important to be aware of the joules emitted. But this is no easy task, and here's why. First, manufacturers commonly reference power output and not energy or joules output. Now, don't confuse energy with power. Energy, which is measured in joules, is the dosage of light that's delivered to the body, whereas power is the amount of electrical wattage needed to operate or run the device. But this isn't the same as the amount of light that's emitted into the tissue to help heal the nerves. The power, or the watt, of an infrared light device will not determine the dosage of light that's being delivered to the nerves. If the unit you're looking to purchase does not disclose the number of joules being emitted, then place a phone call to the manufacturer. If they don't know or they tell you that watts and joules are the same, walk away from the purchase. The second reason calculating energy output can be difficult is because manufacturers don't always reveal the number of red versus infrared light diodes. This is a huge topic. You should always have twice as many infrared light LEDs than red LEDs. This will give you twice as much energy output from the infrared light versus the red light. Remember, this is vitally important because only infrared light can penetrate deep enough to elicit nerve repair. If a device doesn't have enough infrared LEDs or its energy output or joules is low, your results for nerve recovery will be poor at best. The third reason that the joules output can sometimes be misleading is because of something known as the theoretical energy calculation. Now, this can be a very complex topic, but I'll do my best to simplify it. When a manufacturer is determining the energy output for its device, they estimate the energy output by taking an average rating that's listed for each LED. However, this is not the actual energy output, it's only an estimation, which is why it's called a theoretical calculation. The problem with this is that it doesn't factor in the loss of energy in the form of heat. Now, why is this important? It's important because it will artificially inflate the number of joules and often make the energy output appear much higher than it really is. The most accurate way to calculate the energy output is to measure it in a lab that utilizes a state-of-the-art closed environment called an integrated sphere. One of the manufacturing companies for near-infrared light therapy that we work with measured not only their device in this special closed environment, but also eight other devices commercially available. They did this during the design phase to verify that their unit had the capability to maintain high energy output. They hired a third-party, independent, non-biased lab, and the results were astonishing. Let's take a look. Even though these are the actual devices being sold on the market, we've concealed the names so we don't have a bunch of ang angry manufacturers knocking on our door. So this graph shows nine different infrared light therapy devices. The red bar indicates the amount of energy emitted by infrared light and is measured in joules. The unit to the far left, Neurolight, outperformed the other eight units by emitting over 2,500 joules of infrared light. The second best performer is competitor number two, but you can see there was a significant drop in energy output at only 963 joules. Now, look at the device all the way to the far right on the graph, competitor number nine. This device put out a pathetic three joules of energy for near-infrared light. The remainder of the light was from red light, which is completely ineffective for peripheral nerve repair and is complete junk. Remember, the total energy or joules delivered to damaged tissue is what separates cheap, ineffective light therapy units from the higher quality units that are going to cost a lot more, but also produce the best results. Okay, I just threw a lot of information at you, so let me summarize what you need to know about energy output. 
When buying an infrared light device, here's the side note that you need to know. Look at the total energy output per treatment session. A good device should have at least 2,500 to 3,000 joules per treatment session. Also, look at how much of the energy is from red light versus infrared light. You should have twice as much energy from infrared light. And finally, the energy should be measured in a lab and should not be a theoretical calculation. Okay, it gets easier from here, I promise. The third thing you want to look at when purchasing an infrared light therapy device is the overall surface coverage. This topic is pretty straightforward. You want a device that can cover the bottom of the feet and a portion of the calves continuously during the entire treatment application. This will ensure that you get an adequate dosage of light to the affected areas. What you don't want are the handheld wand infrared devices because they simply can't achieve adequate surface coverage by waving a wand around. Moving on to number four, pulse modulation. This topic can also get quite technical, but I'll keep it simple. An infrared light can either be kept on continuously, just like flipping on a light switch, or it can be pulsed, which would be like flipping the light switch on and off continuously for the entire treatment time. You only want to purchase a device which offers pulsed modulation. The problem with continuous shower of infrared light is that the nerves will acclimate to the signal and after a while they'll stop responding and they'll stop healing. On the other hand, if the light is pulsed, stimulation to the nerves will be ongoing allowing for repair and regeneration to the damaged nerves. So here's another side note for you. You want a device that offers pulsed modulation. If it doesn't have pulse modulation, don't buy it. It's really that simple. And finally, number five, let's discuss why warranty matters. Aside from the obvious, I have found that if a manufacturer offers a great warranty, it tells you a few things about the company. First and foremost, it tells you that they built a great product and they're willing to stand behind it. Secondly, it also tells you that they care about their reputation. So here's what you should look for in a warranty. The, the company should offer a two to three year warranty. And if your device stops working for any reason, they should be willing to fix it, no questions asked. Barring any obvious abuse, like you know, your dog chews it up or you drop it at the bottom of the pool. Don't laugh, it's happened. All right, folks. Follow the steps I've outlined in this video and you'll get yourself a great unit that will serve you for many years. Stay tuned for our future video on how to get the most out of your infrared device. So now's a good time to click on the like button and subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when I publish a new video. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Let's get started with the one more time. It's, a, it's good. Just give me a three, two, one. <laughs> shows nine. Okay, picking back up with this graph shows nine. <laughs> we, we need some Lily love. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lily. I want kitty food. <laughs>